here you go. I'm going to give you a pro tip from a dip. In this video, I'm going to show you basically how to do a really easy job of stamping your own concrete. I'm going to show you how to make this pretty sweet roller stamp and it makes the job quick and nice and easy. It's not too hard of a build. If you think you can pour your own concrete, you can probably make this. I'm pretty happy with the way that this turned out. The pattern looks really good. You know, it's not too repetitive. Actually use the roller, use the painter's pole. You could use these handles for shorter pours. You can kind of pull along for like these really long distance uh, runs. You can actually pull the the roller it made uh, amazing imprints it did it did a really good job so uh, I'm going to show you in this video how to do that stick around for the end of the video because I'm going to have an offer for anybody who's interested in buying my bed plans for the month of August 2018 watch at the end of the video for that offer so to start the whole thing out I measured a box 27 by 30 inches deep and about two and a half inches high I wanted to be have, have about a half inch of, of silicone I uh, pre-drilled and screwed the box together and then placed the bricks in the pattern that I wanted. Um, there's no specific pattern. You just have to kind of keep in mind that you are going to be repeating this pattern over and over, and over again. Um, but you can get pretty creative with this and do pretty much whatever you want. The next step was that I grabbed some polymerized sand and uh, this is the same stuff that you use if you're going to make if you're going to do something out of patio stones. So I just worked it into the cracks using my fingers and making sure that there was about a quarter to a half inch depth in the in the sand lines. And then I just basically swept up the remainder with uh, with a broom and uh, got that off there before spraying it with some water. And the, what the water does is it just sort of hardens up the polymer in the uh, in the sand so that the sand doesn't get into the into the silicone. And while that's drying, I just I melted the finishing wax that I'm going to use to seal everything up. Just cleaned off the bricks a little bit, shop vac, and sort of using my hand, and then dipped the uh, the brush, uh, just a regular paintbrush, into the wax and worked it into the cracks and all over the bricks and this will just basically seal everything so that the silicone doesn't actually seep into the bricks and into the into the sand and then when i was done with that i um, actually used a blowtorch to tip it um, this just sort of took away the brush marks and just made it gave it a better overall finish but be careful with that because that is flammable so maybe just have a have something close by to put out fire if you need it. I mixed the silicone, so I used a Smooth On Mold Max 10, mixed it together. Um, I used about one and a half of these gallon pails. I just mixed it with hand by hand, and it's nothing to worry about. You don't have to degas it or anything for such a, a, a small pour. I did give it a bit of a spray with some silicone spray, but you probably don't need to do that. And then poured the silicone, the mixed silicone into the mold. It just sort of finds itself a level surface. Make sure that it is on a level surface. The next thing that I did was I was getting ready to build the drum that this is going to wrap around. So I cut out six discs to arrange on the half inch electrical conduit and I drilled out the center of each disc to uh, accommodate that, uh, that conduit. This is sort of how it all goes together, you can see that there. Now I cut the skin out of quarter inch plywood. You can use basically whatever you want. In fact, you could even consider using say like a 10 inch drain pipe if you have one of those lying around. It'll save you a bunch of steps. I curved the back of this uh, quarter inch plywood. Yeah, I know I'm not supposed to wear gloves, but just give me a break. Uh, I put some tape on the back of the uh, of the plywood there to keep it together because I put a kerf about every half inch or so just to make it easier to wrap around the discs. I glued the discs together before putting them on the conduit just to hold everything together a little bit nicer. And then basically I wrapped the skin around these discs. So to start with I um, put a staple in the top and then you know sort of along each disc there. Um, and I did put a bead of glue along the plywood as well, just so that it holds everything together a little bit nicely. But I put a staple probably about every half inch or so just to hold everything together. And like I said, if you found a 10 inch drain pipe or something around that size and you made your mold the appropriate size, then it could save you a ton of work. After about 48 hours of, of cure time, I demolded the silicone. Super easy process. I was being like really ginger with this because I didn't know how it was going to react to me taking it out, but you could pretty much just grab it by the corner and rip it out. And you'll see it, it, it did a really good job. It, it really conformed to the, the mold or to the to the bricks nicely. And um, yeah, I'm pretty pretty happy with the way that this turned out for my, uh, for my first try. A little bit of sand did come up, but I just picked that off and it 
there was nothing, nothing to worry about really at all. Next thing I did was I drew a square line across my drum there, and I used that line to line up the uh, the silicone mold too. After putting a little bit of silicone caulking on there, and then. Uh, lining geared silicone up with that line i did put a staple in about every half inch or so is probably the best put a whole whack of silicone on the back of the cured silicone mat once that was all on there i basically just rolled it right on Using the staple gun, I just stapled it all together, holding the joint really tightly, and then stapled it all together again about every every half inch or so. It held on held on pretty good. I found that it's like way too light at this point. I don't think it's going to make enough indentation, so I did use the rest of the polymerized sand and fill up the cavity inside the, the roller, and then sealed off around the, the conduit there. The next thing is, is I made a frame for everything. So this is a, a six by one inch angle iron. I put one on each side and that's about the width of the, of the roller. I put some four by three quarters uh, angles on the top of this, uh, of this bracket. And that, that basically accommodates my handles, which I just made out of two by two lumber. I uh, trimmed the conduit to the appropriate length so that I could fit the angle brackets over top put some threaded rod on the inside. So this is what will basically hold everything together. Put a nut on one side and then trimmed the opposite side. But here you go. I'm gonna give you a pro tip from a dip. You should put a, a, a nut on before cutting it because it'll mess up the threads and it's gonna be really hard to get the nut back on there after it's been cut. So do that first. Now it's basically done. You know, there's nothing, nothing really else left to do but uh, order your concrete. So on the day of this pour, it was a pretty hot day. It wasn't the best day to pour. We uh, had to wheel a lot of the, a lot of the concrete into place, as you can see. And we were really sort of fighting time. My neighbor Ian was, uh, was a huge help. He's done a lot of concrete work, so he's, he helped me with this quite a bit. My son, on the other hand, not a huge help. As you can see, the, uh, the truck driver there is not too stoked with, the, with Henry showing up. But um, basically what we did was we uh, put the concrete in place and then we screeded it and then we, f we shaped it using uh, hand trowels, using wood trowels, and then um, got everything finished to a nice trowel finish. And the better job you do finishing, the better it's gonna turn out. So you know really take your you know spend the time to to do this but don't spend too much time because you need to get that right window of firmness in order to, to roll the stamp i used uh mineral spirits as the form release agent use a lot i found it like much better to use more than too little this first roll i definitely used way too little you can see it pulled up a lot of the concrete so basically i had to do this roll over again ian came back and to sort of refinish that that concrete for me uh, you can see I'm spraying a little bit more mineral spirits on there. Spray it on the drum, spray it on the concrete, you know, spray it all over and uh, it'll really help. Now I will say that there is sort of a balance. If you put too much mineral spirits on there, too much form release, then it actually makes the concrete too slippery and the roller will tend to skid and skid more than, than it should be rolling but you'll you figure this out pretty easily and I can like I said it's better to have more than it is to have less uh, so you you can see here I'm using the handles uh, for this this more narrow pour and uh, they worked out pretty good so you can see this last roll here it actually now we've got sort of the idea of how much mineral spirits to use and it works a lot better for the really long rolls, actually, I just put ropes on the side and then pulled it along. I can't even believe how well this worked, how easy it was, how quickly it went. The thing that took the longest was actually finishing, getting the right finish, and then waiting for the concrete to be at the right consistency in order to roll. You know what, this was not a, that difficult of a project. I would recommend you guys trying it out. I'm really happy with the results. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, give me some comments on how I can improve in the future. You know, like I don't I don't make any money doing these videos. I, I was demonetized years and years ago, so there's nothing I can do. So I'm really just doing this for, for fun. And uh, you know, making these videos takes me a long time. I appreciate anything you guys have to say. Even if you think that I'm not doing a good job, you can tell me how I can improve. I'm going to be donating 
donating $10 for the month of August 2018, $10 from every purchase of the bed desk plans, I'm going to be donating to Leo. Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a bed builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 108 year old classic sailing yacht. Tally -ho. and his build of his boat Tally Ho. Um, I think he's doing a really good job. It's a really cool project to see something being rebuilt and reused. I think that's awesome. So like I said, $10, bed desk plans will go to Leo and his project. All right, guys, thanks very much. And uh, look for my next project. Bye for now.